uh, both the Romney and Obama camp have attacked China for various economic issues. And to China's credit, in the last few months recently, they've been uh, making adjustments, right? We've seen the trade deficit come down, their currency reserves have come down, they've made moves to liberalize their interest rates, uh, they've already made a number of moves to try to liberalize the currency to make it more free-floating down the road. And so do you think that uh, this rhetoric that is uh, rather hostile in tone uh, is more just political posturing and scapegoating? What we've seen over history is the party out of power, doesn't matter if it's a Democratic Party or a Republican Party, criticizes the incumbent party for being, quote, soft on China, not pursuing sufficient trade legis uh, trade actions, not filing enough cases with the WTO, not seeking to enforce I intellectual property rights sufficiently strongly in China. So what we see is the party out of power, in this case Governor Romney, criticizing the party in power, in this case President Obama, mm -hmm. as being too weak on China. When President Clinton was running against then President Bush, he criticized President Bush as being too soft on China, as what he called coddling the dictators of Beijing. So the party out of power is always critical. When they get in power, they recognize the complexity and diversity, diversity of interest, that is, of the relationship and generally adjust their policy from the campaign rhetoric. But Governor Romney has painted himself into a corner where he will have to take action on the first day. And I believe that campaigns matter. You know, having run for Congress in mm -hmm. 1992, I'm a great believer that what you campaign on should be how you govern. And when he makes a statement that he's going to brand China as a currency manipulator and he is elected, he's likely going to have to do that. It's going to be hard for him to step down because it's going to be hard for him to say, oh, my campaign didn't mean anything. It's actually, I'm not going to do this. So, you know, I think the campaign, it's more than campaign rhetoric and that he is going to have to take some action. It's also what we've seen during the Obama presidency is the RMB appreciate very significantly versus the U.S. dollar, that we're constantly saying the mm -hmm. RMB needs to appreciate. Well, it has appreciated. And you not only have to look at the real appreciation, that is the number, you know, when it was, you know, 7.0, right. now it's 6.3. We need to look at what China's inflation rate is vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. inflation rate. When there's inflation in China, which is higher than the inflation in the United States, then the nominal exchange rate goes up, I mean the real exchange rate yes. goes up much more significantly. So we've seen adjustments that have been very significant. So to brand them a currency manipulator at this point seems like closing the barn door after the cow has left. So it's, it's quite late and probably not the best, it's not a policy that I would, I would advocate. No, I agree. And I wonder if all this sort of negative rhetoric and posturing is reflecting some, uh, some fear that Americans have. Because when you look out there on the, all the books that are coming out, they keep talking about an America decline and the rise of China. And I'm wondering, do you agree with that kind of characterization? And is that what's driving a lot of the policies and the rhetoric out there? I agree that there is that perception, and I disagree strongly that that is the reality, that and the success of China is success for America. That is, as China grows, as its markets open, as it becomes more uh, rule of law oriented, these are all good for the United States, that China is our largest growing major export market. So China's success is our success. Our success is China's success. That China needs a vibrant, growing America. That that's all good for China. So this perception that China's rise is a threat to America, 
uh, or America's success is a threat to China is wrong. And our political leadership needs to do a better job of expressing that. And we do. I mean, I think, you know, President Obama, Secretary Clinton have repeatedly stated that we seek a prosperous China. And we do seek a prosperous China. We seek a China that is open to Americans, America's goods and services. We seek a China that abides by its own rules, its own laws. We seek a China that lifts people out of poverty, as it's done for the last 32 years. So these are all good things for America. But this perception, as recent polling suggests, that China's rise is not good for America is one that is growing and one which we very strongly need to counter. It's kind of what the National Committee is about. It's about educating Americans about what is really going on in China and educating Chinese about what's really going on in America. <laughs>